This is weird. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, not exactly gonna spend a lot of time editing this one because uh, as of the time of I'm recording this, I've gotta be at work in five and a half hours uh, and I gotta drive for an hour. So it's gonna be a bit rough. This movie is unique. I do like aspects of it. I don't like other aspects of it. And there's a lot to go through in this film. First off, I'll say I like its aspect. I like its ideas. It's uh, idea of what the near future will be like, not just in terms of space travel, but in terms of how humanity f structures and how humanity functions with things from the uh, emotionality tests, like the whole stability tests, to how we interact with each other in terms of uh, going to different planets, uh, the means of space travel and in its entirety. I did like those aspects. I did like Brad Pitt's character and his emotional lacking, his distance from humanity. Like he's very on, he's verging on a psychopath almost in terms of his disconnecting from the world because of his father abandoning him to go off and be in space and whatnot and never returning. And we see his character try to emote and go through these struggles internally throughout the whole film. And I'll admit the first half of the movie is different from the second half of the movie. The first hour is some pretty cool stuff. It's kind of staying in the realm of realistic space stuff. It's building this world, this means of space travel and whatnot. But it's got some pretty cool action scenes. Like it's got a pew, 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 kind of a scene on the moon. And then it leaves the moon and then the movie changes into something else entirely. It's still staying in that realm of believability and attempted at realism in terms of space travel, but it just goes bananas. Bananas. Keep that in mind when you see the movie, you'll understand what I mean. And then it starts to get a lot of vibes from Interstellar, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 Space Odyssey, oddly enough, Blade Runner 2049, especially with how it's shot. And what happens with Brad Pitt afterwards starts to get really, really weird. And it's kind of cool if the movie just would keep its pacing. Its pacing is so goddamn slow after this point. I was already pretty surprised that only an hour had passed by once the whole moon stuff was over, but afterwards the movie is an entirely different animal and it goes like a fucking slug. And I was desperate to try and stay engaged in the movie considering the tonal shift. And you will feel it a lot because some of the stuff is just so bizarre, yet it still somehow moves so slowly that it's it's jarring. It's absolutely jarring to me. Um, I did like the visual aspect of the film. I did like how it was shot. Uh, it's shot by the same guy who shot Interstellar, from correct? So that's obviously some, uh, some bonus points in there. He basically was like, yeah, I did this space stuff already. I can do it again. And Again, I did like aspects of this movie. I did like its attempt at being unique. I did like its ideas. And it's definitely a movie that's going to be kind of decisive with some people. And the part that probably is one of its biggest attractors to me is that this movie isn't holding your hand, either with the world building, what's happening with the characters, what's happening with all the space stuff, and especially the ending. Yet... Brad Pitt's narration is so fucking on the nose of what he's saying. He's literally describing the scene at times to you. There's a point where something's happening and people are scared. It's like, they're scared. It's like, well, no shit, dude. I can see this. And this happens to the point where Brad Pitt's narration isn't just giving it to you literally. There's a scenes that literally explain. Boy, exploit the characters' struggles, hardships, and the goals that they need to attain to overcome them. And I just didn't like that part. I thought that part was really, really silly. I'm not entirely a fan of this movie. I will say that it's still well made. I do like aspects of it. It gave me some good interstellar vibes, but it almost put me to sleep. So in the end, I'm going to give Ad Astra a 4 out of 7. It will definitely be decisive. Some people won't like it. Some people will really like it. It's an art house movie in space. So give it that. I uh, saw a lot of different inspirations too. Uh, Sunshine was definitely an inspiration in this movie. There's 
uh, the idea of madness and, lo and loneliness in space that they talked about, which was also really cool. Um, but again, it's just, it's not my kind of movie. I do appreciate aspects of it, but I'll never watch this movie again. Holy shit, I would, f if I wanted to go to sleep, I would watch this movie to put me to sleep. That's my honest opinion. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.